Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Sean Charlesworth. Sean, the inventor from last year, he writes our 3D printing con column, and I happen to be in New York City. I want to stop by your shop. Thank and you for having me here. I'm glad to have you, yes. This is an awesome shop you have here at NYU. Sean fixes all the camera equipment. You manage all that stuff. You have so much stuff here. Yeah, it's a lot of equipment. But oh. it's also a workspace for you to do some of your 3D printing testing. Yes, I have fortuitous. For us. Yes, fortuitous have access to a shop in New York. And today we're going to talk about the Form Labs Form 1 3D printer that you've been testing. Yes. Uh, now you've written about this for Tested, or will be up on the site soon, but mm -hmm. we want to show you on video what this printer is about. It was announced at Maker Faire a couple years ago, yes. New York Maker Faire, and it got a lot of buzz because it's not the standard type of 3D printing. Correct. Like the MakerBot, which uses extruded, melted plastic. So what does the Form 1 use? Uh, so the Form 1 was developed by uh, graduates from MIT, so they know what they're doing. And it's a resin printer. So uh, the the motivator that I did for Adam, that was done on a really high resolution machine in resin. So it uses a, a UV cured uh, liquid resin. And you can get very, very, very fine detail and print things that you normally wouldn't be able to print with the MakerBot or any uh, you know filament printer. Because it's, it's liquid. The plastic yep. doesn't come in spindles. It comes in these containers. This. It gets filled up in a reservoir. Yes, uh, which is in here, and but the print instead of it being extruded down, the bed is inverted. Yeah, it's a, kind of a mind bend. It, yeah, uh, it's, how, a, it's hanging. Trying to explain to people how this works is a little, it's tough. Um, so yeah, so this is, as I said, this is the Form One Plus, which is their newer uh, mm -hmm. model that's been updated to be a little faster. Okay. Um, amongst other improvements, and so it has a it has a tray, uh, the resin tray that you slide in here. It has an optically clear bottom, and you can pour. We take the tray out even. And yeah. Show can, people that. You can pull it out. Yeah. And it's full of clear resin right now. Okay. So, so there's a, like a silicone-ish yeah. bottom. So it's kind of see-through. Right. And you have this thick resin in here that you fill up, and then uh, the bed depresses into the tray and lifts up slowly yes, layer by layer. Exactly. And you got to keep the challenge with this is that it's very easy to use, but you have to be meticulous with keeping it clean mm. uh, because it's all working on optics and lasers. There's a giant mirror in here. There's smaller mirrors that the lasers use to direct themselves. And so it's, you got to keep it clean, which is a bit of a challenge. If you pick this tray up wrong and put a fingerprint on the bottom, you got to clean the whole thing. So it's a little challenging. And the trays and this are both amber to block UV light <laughs> mm -hmm. so that as it's sitting here, you're not zapping your eyes with lasers and yeah. sunlight's not curing it or anything like that. So as you said, um, we got the build platform up here. And so if I'll just, you know what, I'll just... Uh, cue something up. Yeah, I'll cue something up. And I'll show an example. Uh, it really it lifts up from that reservoir the lasers then focus themselves at each point and cure immediately that point. The detail makes it hard, and then it scrapes off, and then rises the next level. Yeah. So uh, it, you can uh, you have to connect to the computer to upload the thing, but once it's uploaded, you can unhook it, which is nice. Okay. Because some of the prints can take hours and hours and hours. Okay. So once you've uploaded something, you can just simply hit confirm. And then our, our print platform is going to lower down into the liquid, mm -hmm. all right? So it presses right up against the bottom of the tank. And then w because we're using clear, you, you can, might even be able to see the laser skittering around. And yeah. it's basically drawing the part, uh, whatever you know, happens to that be. That cross section. Yeah. The interesting thing with this is that it, when it draws it, it basically sticks to the bottom of the tank. Mm -hmm. So then it goes through a peel process where it tilts the whole tray and peels what you just printed off the bottom of it. Then it, the platform raises up to do the next layer. The tray goes back and it prints the next, and, and it just gravity it keeps through peel. Yeah, it's, it's, peels it. And so I have so I've been printing a lot of jet cars. So here we go. So and it'll be it'll come out like this with this stuck to the platform yeah. like that. And it has little supports that hold the model to the. To the print that's tray. that's the mind bend right there. When you yeah. look at something like a MakerBot or a printer bot, an, an FDM printer, the supports are on the bottom that hold up yeah. the, the figure as you're scanning, backwards. as you're printing. Here, the supports are hangs, and it's holding up your model 
because you don't want this empty space. Yes. Um, so why have you printed this diagonally? Excellent question. Um, the Part of the nature of the beast with this is that if you had something really big and flat, and your your instinct on a MakerBot would be to print it right off flat yeah. on the bed. Um, with this, what you'll run into is because it has to, whatever it just drew, it has to peel the whole thing off. If you had something that took up the whole tray, uh, so say just a cube, right? Uh, it's a lot of material to peel off, and it it, it will most likely fail. Mm. It just it's like peeling a label off in one go without tearing it. Right. It's just really hard to do. So uh, what it needs to do is, if it was a cube, it would then tilt that cube at an angle so that rather than this big cross section, it's maybe doing the point, which is much more manageable. And by the time it would get to something bigger like the middle portion, it has a lot of the model already built up, which helps it to peel it off. Got it. So uh, a lot of these things, it's a little bit challenging to figure out the position to get it to print properly. And because you do have supports, it does leave some little boogers when you clean them off. So it is a, it's kind of a challenging game to angle this so that everything prints okay, but is also properly supported and can peel off all right. So a lot I, of learning by experience. It re yeah, it so really is. So based on your experience with this, how did this, does this compare? It's a $3,000 printer yeah. to something like the MakerBot or the PrinterBot uh, to the other style. Well, printer. the lowest setting on this is the highest setting on the MakerBot or any other The lowest filament. detail. Yeah, so, so one micron. One micron. Yeah. Um, so that's the lowest setting. Wow. Okay. It, go, it has a 0.05 and a 0.025. Oh my gosh. So I four times the resolution, yeah. maximum resolution and of FDM. I've printed most of these at 0.05 because the it takes a long time. Okay. So like a little jet car like this, uh, which I just lost a part of. <laughs> a little a little guy like this uh, took eight hours. Oh wow. Uh, the bigger guy, I think this took um, about 12 hours, and mm -hmm. that's on the medium setting. Got it. If you went to the finest resolution, it would take hours and hours a day. and hours. So, so yeah. And what, what about the, uh, the error, the amount of errors of this? Is this something that warps? Is it something that's going to stop halfway? Um, um, well, we have, warp, a, have a failed print here, um, which it, it basically a piece of it didn't peel off during mm -hmm. the peel process, which then that piece gets stuck on the bottom and blocks In the, the laser. And then so nothing uh, here draws past that. Yeah. It does happen. It, uh, it often it happens if you don't have the correct support laid out because you can modify the supports and how they attach and how much there is, and that it can be problematic. And and I I, I hate to say this, but this is actually the third printer that I have that had. Form one has had to send you um, because of yeah the the problems. first the first one had a laser problem when you. Look at the laser, it should be a pinpoint of light, and mine had a halo around it so that it was like trying to, pr rather than painting with a fine brush, you're using like a big blobby brush. Focusing so problem. So nothing turned out right. right. And then the second printer, uh, the there's a tilt motor, or a peel motor that tilts the tray, and it tilted it, and it kept tilting it until it rammed it into the body and, and just oh, made no. terrible grinding noises oh, no. and, and cracked the tray. Oh, no. How Both, user serviceable is that? Um, Laser, not not at all, really. Yeah. Now, now, if it could be the laser thing, could be a dirty mirror, and mm. that can be done. But s s with my background in doing film and TV stuff, s cleaning sensors and mirrors to where they are absolutely spotlessly clean is extraordinarily difficult. Yeah. It's really, really difficult. You almost need a clean room, and you need the right uh, cleaning materials like mm. uh, uh, fluids and stuff like that. Uh, but it's that's doable, and they did. Tr I went through that process to try to fix the first one, and it just turned out to be a faulty laser. Uh, the second one, they also will send you out parts and stuff to do it user. And I looked at it, and it doesn't seem too bad. But the problem with mine was that the tray actually jammed in the down position and was not removable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and if you go on the user forms and stuff, these are the two go-to things. If it's something's going to go wrong, it's want to be that and. You know, a lot of people get on, you know, this is another Kickstarter thing, and a lot of people really get bent out of shape on this kind of stuff. It's like, oh, I can't believe this is a $3,000, blah, blah. But it's, you got to remember, this, is, this isn't a big company doing this. This is sm really smart people doing it, but it's a small team of smart people, and things are going to happen. It's, right. it's just inevitable. And so they had, you know, probably some laser supply issues, and they're working it out, and so on and so forth. So 
I was patient and they were really great to work with and this is number three and it has been printing like a champ cool. um, without any problems. And then the resin you have to buy from them as well? Yeah, and it's uh, there's black, white, gray and clear. Okay. Uh, so I've been uh, playing with the gray, black, and clear. Mm -hmm. um, the black is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, clear does a very nice job as well, but you do run into the fact that uh, this is UV reactant stuff. Yeah. So if you let this sit in the sun uh, unprotected, uh, right. any of them will get very brittle. The yellow or the, the clear will get yellow. Mm. Um, but uh, you can do that, you can get around that by painting or even doing a clear coat on it, um, which I haven't done with any of this stuff yet, but you can do that. So the advantage is, is that it's relatively affordable for this type of rapid prototyping technology, and the resolution is much higher than what you find on FDM, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it still has its quirks, it does. and it's still you know, a budding product, uh, probably weight, Unless you need it right now, is it something I, to, to, to wait on? I think it's one of those things where it, it, it depends on what you want to do. If, this, if you need very high resolution, you're doing miniatures or something mm -hmm. like that, um, this is a very good machine for that. And then you can mold and, those miniatures yes. and it makes something that's, that's longer absolutely, lasting. Absolutely, you get like the stuff uh, yeah. that's been on tested right. making Smooth the molds of the 3D yep. printer. And, uh, you can totally do that. Um, I've been very happy with the quality of prints I've gotten out of it. Um, and I mean, just to give you some perspective, the uh, this this is a bag of failure. <laughs> <laughs> but this this was uh, all one jug of material, and there was even more that I printed with this successfully. Uh. So it's one hundred and forty five dollars for a jug, but it goes quite a long way. Right. So it's. I, I haven't figured out the like per, per gram yeah. cost like compared to filament, but it's going to be more expensive. But you can get a lot out of it, and I think it just depends what you're doing. And you, and you just need to be aware that you need a dedicated workspace for this. So there's the, you got your computer, you got the printer, you have a cleaning station. Mm -hmm. uh, all the parts have to be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. Mm. Um, everything around here is kind of sticky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just you know, but. Uh, you know, if you have the space and you're meticulous and you have really detailed things that you want to do, it's a very, very nice printer. And, and I and and if that and if it fits what you want to do, I could justify the cost. It's uh, you know, I think it, it is a good product. It's very nicely built, and I had some flu you know flukes, but that'll happen. And I'm using units that have been sent out over and over and over again and torture tested. So very cool. You know, well, thanks so much, Sean, for showing yeah. us your experience with the Form One printer and uh, we'll find more of the stuff on Tested. Um, until then, we'll see you next time. See you. Bye.